In a previous video for meiosis 1, we left off at the end of telophase 1 where the homologous chromosomes have been separated. These two were once a pair of homologous chromosomes but at the end of telophase 1, microtubules pulled these two apart and cytokinesis resulted in the formation of two cells. And these two cells now begin to undergo meiosis 2 which will further separate these two sister chromatids. If you want to refresh a bit about meiosis 1 before learning about meiosis 2, then I'd suggest you watch our video on meiosis 1. Before the cells can undergo meiosis 2, they go into a stage known as interkinesis. Now in interkinesis, there is no DNA replication that occurs. The DNA has already been replicated before meiosis 1 begin. So interkinesis is kind of like an intermediate stage and in this stage the chromosomes do not fully decondense to form chromatin either. They are not fully decondensed, they are still somewhat chromosomes still. So when the cell decides to undergo meiosis 2, it goes through four stages and the four stages are named similar to the stages in meiosis 1. The first stage in meiosis 2 is prophase 2 which is followed by metaphase 2 which is then followed by anaphase 2 and then telophase 2. At the end of telophase 2, cytokinesis occurs which results in the formation of four haploid cells. This is how the cell looks at the end of telophase 1. And as prophase 2 begins, the nuclear membrane begins to dissolve. Sometime in interkinesis, the centrosomes have replicated. Even though no DNA replication takes place, centrosome replication takes place and they have moved to opposite poles of the cell they begin to radiate microtubules which will eventually come and attach at the kinetochore of the sister chromatids. Each homologous chromosome here is made up of sister chromatids. At the end of prophase 2, the nuclear membrane has completely dissolved and the microtubules have formed and attached themselves to the kinetochore of the sister chromatids. The next stage that follows is metaphase 2. In metaphase 2, the homologous chromosomes are arranged at the metaphase plate, an imaginary line at the center of the cell and fully the microtubules are attached to the kinetochores of the chromosomes. This microtubule from this end of the centrosome attaches to this sister chromatid. This microtubule from this centrosome attaches to this sister chromatid. As metaphase ends and anaphase progresses, the microtubules that are attached to the sister chromatids begin to shorten and pull the sister chromatids apart. This results in the separating of the sister chromatids. Initially, these two were sister chromatids attached to each other at the centromere. These two sister chromatids are pulled apart during anaphase 2 by the microtubules. Now this results in the formation of haploid cells eventually when cytokinesis will occur. The chromatids have separated. Telophase 2 follows anaphase 2 and in telophase 2 you can see the sister chromatids have fully separated and the nuclear membrane has reformed. After telophase 2 cytokinesis follows which results in the formation of four haploid cells. We originally started with one diploid germ cell but now we are left with four haploid cells. And now this is a gamete, it's a haploid gamete. And when two such haploid gametes fuse, the diploid zygote is formed and the diploid nature of the cell is restored again. And that is about meiosis 2, the formation of four haploid cells. Meiosis 1 resulted in the formation of two cells and those two cells undergo meiosis 2 to form four haploid cells. Now that we've learnt about different cell division processes, mitosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, can you think of the differences between mitosis and meiosis? What about the similarities between meiosis and mitosis? Which stage in meiosis, meiosis 1 or meiosis 2, do you think resembles mitosis more? Think about that. 